Welcome back to a continuation of the vignette on two-level fractional factorial designs. We have just done a small fractional factorial experiment. That design, the weighing of three objects, established the concept and illustrated the methods. Now in part four, we will expand the scope of our investigations using the same principles of rational confounding. Our last fractional factorial design looked at only three factors. Often we need to investigate complex systems that include many more factors. How many? I have a rule of thumb. 7 plus or minus 2. If you have fewer than five factors, you don't give the system a chance to let the interactions surface, if they exist. If you try to run an experiment with more than nine factors, you will run into logistics problems in trying to get all the settings exactly right. The biggest design I ever ran had 12 factors and took nearly a year to complete. Let's look at a design that is right in the middle of my rule of thumb. With seven factors, there are seven degrees of freedom for single effects. The number of two-factor interactions is calculated from the combinations formula, which simplifies to n times n minus 1, all divided by 2. So we have... 7 times 6 divided by 2, which is 21. So there are 21 countable two-factor interactions. Notice I said countable. There is then a total of 28 pieces of potential information. However, all 21 countable interactions will probably not happen. That is why it is so important that during the brainstorming process, you and your team focus prior knowledge to identify the likely interactions. The base design that is the closest match for our total information requirement is a 32-run configuration. We will continue with this generic design but later show an alternative approach for a physical system with some prior information. Now we'll see how the p-value is computed. We need 32 runs based on our information analysis. 2 to the n where n equals k minus p, is equal to 32, so n equals 5. Since k equals 7, p is 7 minus 5, which is 2. So it is the information requirement that drives us to the size of the base design, and the base design leads us to the value of p. Recall that p is used as a counter to help us build and understand our fractional factorial. There are three uses of p. In general, there are p generators, the fraction is 1 over 2 to the p, and there are 2 to the p words in the defining contrast. There are then, for this design, two generators, a 1 over 2 to the 2 fraction, and 2 to the 2 words in the defining contrast. We choose the generators first. These are higher order interactions from the base design. There are tables available to help in the selection. For this design, we will confound factor F with the A, B, C, D interaction and factor G with the B, C, D, E interaction. Both of these four factor interactions are highly unlikely. The fraction is a quarter fraction. Now the hardest part, calculating the defining contrast. We need four words in the defining contrast. Bring the generators down and multiply through by the factor on the left to get the identity element 1. Do this for the second generator. So we multiply through by g, which gives us g squared. B, C, D, E, G. Of course, the G squared turns into 1. We only need 1, 1. But now we only have three words if we count the 1, which we should. What do we do now? We multiply the first found words together. So we get A, B squared, C squared, D squared, E, F, G, and of course the squared terms turn into 1, and we finish with the complete four-word defining contrast.
1, A, B, C, D, F, B, C, D, E, G, and A, E, F, G. Before we go further, let's review the rules of confounding. Remember, rules were made to be broken. Number one, do not confound single effects with each other. We never break that rule. Number two, do not confound single effects with two-factor interactions. Sometimes we break that rule. And number three, do not confound two-factor interactions with each other. We'll usually break that rule. Before we complete this series on fractional factorials, I would like to show an experiment with seven factors in 16 runs. The key to this practical experiment is the prior knowledge of the likely interactions among these factors. If you have my book, you can follow this beginning on page 103. The team has identified seven factors in this machining process for making wheel bearings. Of the 21 countable two-factor interactions, seven have been identified as possibilities. This is key in using a smaller design. In the appendix to chapter 5, I have provided templates with all the information for useful fractional factorial designs. This is the design template for a 7-factor 16-run experiment. Here we see the three generators and the complete defining contrast as well as the confounding among the two-factor interactions. Using the template and the prior knowledge of likely interactions in this machining system, we are able to place the factors in the appropriate columns to avoid having likely interactions confounded with each other. Notice we don't put these factors in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We put them in A, B, C, D, F, E, G columns to avoid the likely confounding. By using Minitab, we can automate much of the by-hand process of designing experiments. We go to DOE and we choose Fractional Factorial Designs. And in step one, we select seven factors. In this dialog box, we're going to use two-level fractional factorial with the default generators. Click on Designs and choose the one-eighth fractional factorial design. That is the 16-run design. We already told it we had seven factors. Click OK. You will add the names and the levels of the factors and eventually, Minitab will print out the entire experimental design configuration ready for you to add data which can then be analyzed in this computer system. This completes the series of ignets on fractional factorial designs. These are the workhorses of experimental design. They are also far more complex in their construction. I encourage you to begin to internalize the concepts of confounding and what is likely information. Remember, experimental design is not just a bunch of methods, but an integrated process with each segment building and relying on the previous segments. Best wishes in your experimentation.